Okay, so I'm gonna cut to the chase. I'm in a band, we call ourselves emo pop, but really what matters is that we're in kind of the alt punk sphere. And therefore the project is inherently very political. And because of that, we're getting to use it as a vehicle for our activism. This video is kind of like an experimental vlog to track progress and also give some transparency to our fans. <laughs> Not only that, but as y'all watch me learn what the f I'm doing, hopefully you'll be able to follow suit and try some of this yourself. I'm gonna give kind of a rundown of what we've got so far and what we have planned down the pipe, but first. <laughs> you will notice I am not making any eye contact with the camera and I can guarantee you that is not going to improve. I am autistic and so in a way, these vlogs are very much a practice run for y'all talking to me in real life. <laughs> Anyways, okay, what we got so far. I live in DFW, so currently I'm gathering this list of organizations in the area. Dallas is kind of shaped like a pinwheel, so I have a whole bunch that are in the center because that's going to be where most of the population is, but also different ones around the pinwheel as well. I'm going to be making a community resource pamphlet or zine. So it'll have the list of organizations, their contact information, their addresses, but also like a quick rundown of what each of these facilities offers. We have some really good organizations within DFW that I did not know existed and other people probably won't either. Organizations that have services that range from job assistance to food pantry to providing health care for specifically unhoused trans youth. And somebody actively in distress may not have the capacity or resources to do a lot of research into who can help them and where. In terms of distribution, the plan is to give them away at shows, but also before shows, go around the area and tape them to public property. So I'll keep y'all posted on the progress of that as I'm putting it all together. The other thing that we're considering doing kind of as merch or in lieu of merch is uh, wildflower seeds. We're not touring yet, so we're sourcing wildflower seeds that are native to this area. We'll be getting a couple pounds of seeds total and then putting them in salt shakers to sell at shows. Along with another zine that I'm making about each of those seeds and what benefits that particular wildflower brings to its area. We found a good source at a great price for about a dozen different wildflowers. Once those come in, we'll have a better idea of how thick the holes in the shaker will need to be to accommodate seeds so that people can literally just like walk. But yeah, that's where we are as of July 20 something, maybe, maybe 30th, it might be the 30th. I refuse to check, confusion is my brand. <laughs> First show is September 6th, so start the clock. Today is August 1st. I checked. Uh, yesterday I finished the community resources zine, so that's pretty sick. I do not yet have a copy to show for it because it has not been printed, but I don't need an actual copy to like show y'all how to make a zine. I'm gonna try to do this at a speed that is easy to follow but not boring to watch, so let's go. We take the paper, we fold it long ways. I believe the kids call this hot dog. And take your hot dog, unfold it, and then fold it, I believe it's called hamburger downwards. Once you got this, you're gonna fold it in half long ways, so another hot dog, and then unfold and grab a pair of scissors. On the side with the crease, you're gonna cut into the middle until you hit the crease that's right here. From there, you unfold the whole thing again, turn it into a hot dog, and press these sides together. At which point you're left with this neat little butterfly and you can just identify which page is your front and back covers and fold them over. And I would recommend doing that while looking at the paper and not at a camera so it doesn't look like complete garbage. But anyways, here you go. Also, real quick, I wanted to talk about why I chose zines, like why I'm incorporating this as a part of my activism. The answer is gonna sound real silly for a second until I explain, but really it's because I started out as a TikToker. I'm very used to and adept at consolidating information on complex topics into really bite-sized packages. And with time and practice, I've been able to ensure that those bite-sized packages are also really easy for the layman to understand without any background knowledge on the topic. As proud as I am of the community resource zine and the zine that's going to explain those wildflower seeds, the plan is to really expand this library. But because of the topics that I want to cover, it's going to require some not just research but community outreach. For example, one of the concepts I would love to cover is prison abolition, but I am by no means an expert on that. But if I were to sit down with an expert, an academic, or like a really experienced activist who's been doing work in that sphere for a long time, we can work out how to communicate those points in the simplest way possible without leaving out information that would be beneficial to the movement. If I were to try to do that research and make the zine all by myself, I know for a fact I would leave out some important shit. Because despite all my best intentions, I am not the expert. 
I'm not even of the demographic that is most impacted by the topic. So not only would I likely leave out a lot of information that is really important and should not be left out, but also I lack the lived experience of how these policies impact people in their everyday lives. And at this point I am speaking more generally because there's a lot of topics I would love to cover. Uh, for example, land back is a really important one. And Lord knows, I am not qualified. I guess what I'm trying to say is that like, yes, I did give a tutorial, but the majority of these things you should not be learning directly from me. Just because I'm really good at like consolidating information does not mean that I am a wealth of knowledge. Unless of course, we're talking about the linguistics of ASL or the Saw franchise. Autism. It is August 5th, I think. And I have to go into the office later today. That sucks. However, we got our first batch of zines printed. And as of right now, that's the only update I have. Running a band while also working full time is very difficult, okay? Okay. Today is the sixth, and aside from the fact that I'm in desperate need of a haircut, I don't really have updates. However, I am gonna torture y'all with just a little bit of philosophy real quick. Cause, okay, so, hmm. My personal philosophy for decision-making, right? Whether that is like up in government or down in the day-to-day, -day, what is going to do the most good for the most people who need the most help. It drives pretty much everything in my life. And that includes the activism work that I'm doing through Menagerie. The thing is, I am trying really hard to learn from people who have been doing this a lot longer than I have. And something I keep running into is you cannot just work with people who you agree with. And it sucks because uh, they are absolutely correct. It's just that with the rise of like identity politics, I've been taught to fear through all of the polarization going on that if I even interact with a conservative that they're gonna hate crime me, right? And that's just not a sustainable way to live your life and view your fellow man, right? Like there are absolutely the violent ones, but your average everyday person is making the decisions that they think are going to be best for them and for their family. The thing is, for me, I think that doing what's best for you and your family is just an incredibly myopic way to view the world and is like super selfish and like a terrible way to make decisions, but I need to, I need to put that down. <laughs> if I want to learn to control that pufferfish that lives inside me that wants to puff up and become useless at that topic, I need to remove myself from the sphere of like electoral politics. I don't mean that in a general sense, vote please. I really mean more when I'm speaking publicly or interacting with the public. If I'm passing out pamphlets at a show, I need to choose my topics carefully. If I start spitting out talking points that align a little too closely with the party lines that they're so used to hearing, it will immediately alienate any conservatives who have been taught because of the polarization to view me as the enemy if I align too closely with Dems. So essentially what we're left with is the topics that Dems are too chicken shit to cover which as a low-key communist is most of the things that I care about anyway, so. And to any conservatives who are watching who are curious what the hell I mean by being like a low-key communist, I mean that like community care is really important, taking care of your community. I don't mean authoritarian communism. Um, I will probably have a zine on that, come to one of my shows. Anyways, the reason I'm including this like mental shift that I'm having to do, I am not the authority. I am not the blueprint. I'm deeply flawed, I am learning as I go, I'm flying by the seat of my pants on this. I am not trying to lead. I am trying to provide transparency in this journey that I'm having so that you know you can also do that. I'm not here to lead you on that journey, I'm here to show you it's possible. I'm trying to be very transparent about the fact that I have no clue what I'm doing. My light died. Anyways, that's all the updates I have for now. I might check in at the end of the day if I have time to work on another zine. I did not have time to work on another zine. We finally have merch. Well, I mean, it's been purchased. We haven't received anything yet. <laughs> but once everything is delivered, we'll have shakers. We'll have wildflower seeds. We'll have little bags to put the wildflower seeds in so that we can give refills and not just the shakers worth. We got stickers. So not only are we gonna be able to sell the stickers as is, uh, but we're also going to be able to put those stickers on the shakers to make the shakers branded. We'll also occasionally be able to use stickers to pin up our um, zines instead of just regular tape. Uh, because extra branding. We're also stealing an idea from our friend Faith, who is Pennyboard. I never know whether to say that they are Pennyboard or that they're in Pennyboard, because they're, they're a solo artist, but every time they perform, it's with a full band behind them, and I... I'm actually not sure if they still do this, but at least at some point, uh, you could buy stickers from them uh, by, like, following them on Instagram or Spotify instead of, like, handing over money. So the main thing that's left for me to do while we're waiting for all this stuff to come in is to finish the zine that goes with the wildflower seeds. And let me tell you, the, the research has taken a minute. 
I am not a biologist. I am not a geneticist. I am not an ecologist or a botanist, okay? I don't understand taxonomical structures, so stop being so specific with your wildflower species, guys. Also, if we could stop running with, like, offensive names, that would be great. No, I'm not gonna repeat them. Go find my zine and look up alternate names for each of these flowers yourself. <laughs> What's funny is, as annoying and difficult and tedious as the research is, I know for a fact I'm gonna hate my life 20 times more when it comes to actually putting the zine together, because on top of everything, I also have to get pictures of each seed and each flower. I say have to, but I want to be very clear. No one's making me do this but me. It just kind of feels like the correct way to format that zine until my brain was like, all right, it's your only option. This is all you got. Which, by the way, is the exact impulse that made this zine adorable. We're going to our friend's show later today, so I'm hoping that I'll have enough time to put a bunch of these together um, so that before the show we can go around the area and tape these to public property. It's like a little practice test drive. I love it. You know, I'm really starting to wonder how I'm gonna transition between days on these vlogs. It is now August 13th and y'all look, ta-da! The holes on these are really big, but, but if for some reason things keep getting stuck, there's also one of these bad boys where you can just open up the side. And the little bags that we have in here to prevent any sort of spillage when people are like taking them home um, are organza and also reusable. We're still waiting on the stickers to come in so that we can like brand them. I'm not done with the zine yet, still. Most of the research is done, which is good, uh, but it's looking like I'm gonna have to completely change the layout I was originally planning on doing. I don't know why. I thought I could fit photos of both the flower and the seed on these teeny tiny little zines. But hey, this really plays into the idea of like, hi, I don't know what I'm doing. But yeah, I'm extremely happy with these. Everything about them is reusable except the seeds. But I do think we're gonna have to sell the refills separately because a pound of seeds is actually not as big as I thought it was. So for us to be able to like keep doing this and then eventually upsize if we, you know, get bigger, uh, we, we, we will need to actually like sell those for money. <laughs> The good news is though, because we're not including a shaker on those, they can be like three to five dollars. Cause uh, we got approximately a million of these little bags for like two bucks. <laughs> Anyways, our very first show, AKA when we're debuting this merch is gonna be September 6th. It's a cover show. It's gonna be actually a little complicated. I'm also vlogging that process as well. So if you wanna see like the final products with all the branding and like find out how they did and if they sold it all, if people were interested, um, Look, look out for that. That's gonna be a part of it, showing like, you know, how people are responding to things. Thank you so much for watching and for bearing with me as I fumble through how to do an activism. <laughs> Obviously, this is not the end of this particular journey. It's just the end of this leg of it. So I will probably film more once we start expanding the zine library, but for now, that's, that's it. So thank you.